Okay, uh, we're gonna make the cow catcher. So we've got uh, our train completed at this point. Um, we just need the cow catcher and the track for it to go on. So let's start with the cow catcher. New components, make it active. I'm going to make all of those invisible. I'm going to go in here and deselect all these guys. Perfect. All right, cow catcher. I think I'm going to do from the bottom um, and work my way up. So if we look at the, um, I have to look, uh, but I think I remember what it looks like. So we've got a straight line, it comes down comes to a point, almost looks like a home plate um, on that, that should be there. Um, this dimension I believe is 1.8, this dimension is 0.25, and I'm going to use my equals constraint to make those equal to each other, those equal to each other, and this is incorrect, uh, this should not be, this should not be perpendicular. Um, I guess from here to here is one inch. Okay, there's that. Um, and then we're going to create an offset work plane. Um, now, in the modified version, I think it's a one inch offset. So we're going to do a one inch offset plane. We're going to create a sketch on that surface. And now we're going to draw our second. This is what the top looks like. So I think it's very similar. Um, it's going to be this kind of thing. Um, let's make these perpendicular to each other. Let's use our equal constraint to make these equal. Make these equal. This dimension is 1.2. And this dimension is 0.25 and the overall height of this is 0.75 and we want these two to be lined up or technically we could just line up these two points so I'll use my horizontal vertical to line those two pieces up and I'm going to use a collinear to line that up with that and there we have it so there is our cow catcher we just need to use the loft tool uh, to do that. So we're at, here's loft. I'm going to loft from this sketch to this sketch. And there we have it. Now, if we look at the pictures, so here are the pictures. Um, if you look, we're going to shell this out. So it's got an opening here, which is the bottom. And we can see what that shell is, is 0 0.10. And then we have this inset right here. And you can see that that's thinner, so we actually have to do the shell first, and then we're going to cut into this. Um, if we did the cut in and then the shell, this would actually be the same thickness as this. Uh, we'll do the pegs at the very end, but again, same type of thing. You want to you want to kind of pay attention to the drawing, but these are going to be solid pegs, so I don't want to do the shell tool um, with the pegs on, or else it's going to shell those as well. Now these are small pegs, so it would actually fully fill them in, but Again, you want to kind of look at that. Um, so here's where that change was made. It's a one inch versus 0.75. And we'll, we'll take a look at that um, and kind of let you make a judgment call on what you think you should do with that. But I personally like the, the 0.75 personally, but uh, we'll go with the modified changes there. This thickness should be 0.1. Again, it's gonna, uh, when we click on the faces and body, it's going to remove that face. Um, if I cl you know, clicked on the top, and selected the top, then it would make um, it would also make that um, it would make it hollow if I did both of those faces, um, holding down Control to select that second one. Um, but again, I don't want to do that, um, so I'm going to hold down Control and deselect that one. So there we go. Uh, it's an inside shell. So you can see there it is. Now we're going to draw these on here. So these are quite easy to do. You, uh, do a new sketch on this particular face. We're going to do the offset tool um, to bring that in a negative 0.1. Uh, 
And again, how I'm getting that is you can see this point one typical. So that's a point one boundary around there. And then I'll finish my sketch using my extrusion to be a negative point forty five. So this is fifty thousandths in. And again, I'm pulling that dimension right here. So if this is a hundred thousandths, this is fifty thousandths that I had to um, extrude in there, cut in fifty thousandths on that. Same thing on the other side, so I'm just gonna spin it around. Create a sketch on this face. Use my offset tool. Offset this to negative 0.1. Finish. Extrude. Select negative 0.15. Cuts that in. And now we just need to do the pins on the back. So we'll go on the back side. Select sketch. I'm going to create three points. Actually, no, we want to create three circles. So I can use the circle tool. Um, I'm going to create one about here in the middle. Uh, use my equals constraint. And then I just have to dimension one of them. .25. I'm going to dimension from here to this point. That's going to be 0.6. So this was 1.2 across the top. Um, I could have done a midline right down the middle there and just con uh, made it constrained to there, but I didn't. Uh, for the top, I think it's 0.25. I'm going to check that, though. Um, this one is 0.5 lower, and then these are horizontally constrained. And this one's horizontally constrained, and then the dimension between these two is 1.25 and then the dimension from here and here is just half of that so I'm actually going to select this and then hit divide by 2 to put that right in the middle let's check all those um, from the center of this to the top is 0.125 so I've got that messed up everything else should be correct so there's the 0.625 the 1.25 um, and then the half an inch drop down from the center of that to the center of that. That looks good. Uh, so this one should be 0.125. That looks better. I'm going to finish that sketch. I'm going to extrude those three things out 0.125. And then I'm going to put a chamfer on them. So Again, going with this, you've got a 10,000th chamfer on each of those. So I'm going to go to my chamfer, select this one, 0.01 for 10 thousandths. It said 45 degrees, but since we're equal distant, that's the same thing. So we can just do equal distant and do that. And that now makes my cow catcher. Again, if you don't like the height of that, if that looks really kind of odd to you, um, uh, that's a really easy fix. You just change where your offset plane was and just make that 0.75. And now this is what the original document had. Uh, it looked like this in the original. Um, but again, the modified version has this set of one um, offset. So it looks a little taller. Let's just turn on our main body and now let's uh, joint these two. So I'm going to use the joint feature and I'm going to select on this one. I'm going to go to the nearest center point of one of these. Now it doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted. I just select that. Uh, let's do that right there. And then on this one, this need to be consistent, so I'm going to be on this center point right there. So that locks those in. Now, if you notice, see how the cow catcher hangs lower than this. Um, and the other modification, I guess, that I've made since then is that I took off the chamfer on this front edge there. Uh, I'll put it back on just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, but that's it. This this won't rotate if you click on OK because it's a I've got this as a rigid uh, joint. Um, that's the only one I have to do. I can't, it, it won't move. If that was a, a Revolute where it could spin, I'd have to do a second one so it would lock another pin in place. But 
that's it. Um, let me go back to this main train body here um, and show you kind of what I did here. On this uh, fillet where we did all the edges, uh, when you select this, if I hold down control, I can select another um, edge onto that. And this one I'm actually going to delete. And then on this one, I'm going to select that edge. So again, I'm holding down control to select it. I forgot to select it the first time. But I'm going to show you um, what this looks like with that rounded edge on the front. So it kind of looks, uh, looks kind of goofy to me um, with that rounded edge right there. And I also think that if you want the cow catcher lower like that, then you might want to lower the entire body of the train. So uh, why not just do like a press pull of that particular face? So like this face, why not just pull this down you know, 0.25 so it matches the other. So now, you know, it lines up. But again, I think that looks kind of silly with that rounded edge there. So that's why I um, went into the train body and just modified this. Hold down control and I took off that front edge. So let me take off that, deselect it. And then to me that looks a little, a little better. And it goes into there. I don't know. That's those are just my thoughts on that. I think I would probably end up doing like that. Although I think this is a little chunky down here. Um, you know, it kind of depends. Maybe you decrease the size of the wheels on yours if you want to make modifications to it. But at the end of the day, when you put all these back in, um, reactive it, it looks pretty good. I'm going to change the uh, appearance of that. I'm going to make it the uh, dark gray color. And there we have it. That's my Hendersonville train um, to start with. Let's make the uh, track for it to go on. And then we will, um, we're going to be adding a train car to it. So you're going to, we're going to design a train car to go on the back side of this. I'm going to kind of work up one of those for you and then you can kind of design your own from there. But let's do one more component. see any of these again. It's kind of a pain. There's probably another way to do this. You can toggle them all off. I just haven't learned yet what that is. Let's look at what the train track looks like. Okay, so how do I want to do this? I think I want to create this profile and then extrude the profile. Why? Maybe just do the overall size and do these things. I don't know. Maybe a top view, top view, and then extrude down and then cut these little grooves. Maybe that's probably what I'll end up doing. Let's try that. So top view, we'll go with this, and we'll do a rectangle. Uh, it's pretty long, I think it was 12 inches. So do something like that. Uh, let's look at some dimensions here. 12 inches long and 3.4 wide. So. Looks like there's some lines that we're gonna draw. Um, these, this is centered. Looks like we have a circle and then kind of a radius here and then a straight. So uh, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna skip the grooves because we don't really need those. We'll do that from the side and we'll just cut the grooves in once we're done. Um, let's do these two circles and see what we get here. So 
So this one, it's got a 1.4 inch diameter. It looks like that this is 0.6 wide and it gives us a dimension. This is one inch in this way. So this is gonna be probably one inch out this way. Uh, if that makes sense to the center because it kind of mirrors uh, this piece right there. So let's do a circle. circle here. Um, again, ideally, okay, this is okay. So this is bigger. That's good. This is a bigger opening than this is. That's smart of them to do that um, if you want it to fit. So this right here is going to be the 1.4 inch. This one's going to be the 1.5 inch. But the dimensions are still the same to the center point. So this is an inch from here. This one is going to be an inch from here. And then we want to line these up on the center. So again, I'm just going to use a construction line from the midpoint. And then I'm going to make those coincident. And then I'm going to make this vertical to that. So that might be a little further over there. I'm going to draw a couple lines. Um, I'm going to hit X. So this one is now no longer a construction line. And I'm going to do, hit X to toggle that on. I'm going to use the symmetry tool to put these two lines symmetry around that. And then I just need to dimension from here to here. And that's going to be 0 0.6 where that was. And then I got that from this right here is 0 0.6. These are going to go from this marker, which is 1.375, to this marker, which is 2.025. 2.025 minus 1.375. So I'm going to do my lines up here. Again, symmetry. Clink, clink, clink. Distance from there to there is 2.025 minus 1.375. So again, you can see that there's 65 and this is uh, 0 0.60 so we got 50 thousandths different between those two which is good um, I don't think that they radius this it didn't look radius uh, maybe they do um, so they did a 0.16 times 4 yep so you got there 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 and there so you're you're get, going to radius all those which is fine um, that looks good. So let's uh, go back. I think we're all set. Finish the sketch. We're going to extrude this part, this part, and this part. And then we're going to extrude how far? I don't think I can see it. Uh, one inch. Six. Okay. Last thing we need to do is cut our tracks in place. So a couple ways we could do that. We could either just draw it on the top as a couple rectangles and then extrude down. I'm actually going to do that um, and use my mirror tool to do that as well. So um, I can actually modify my original one, but I'm not going to. Line, construction line, come right down the middle, uh, keep it rectangle. Uh, 
that's going to be problematic. Um, I didn't want that constraint on there, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. So I'm going to delete this constraint. Um, okay. Let's look at some of our measurements here. First one's over 0.4. And then the second one's over 0.75. So there we go. So there are a dimension from here to here. This is going to be 0.4. And our dimension from here to here is going to be 0.75. Now, um, why did I draw this one? I have no idea. Um, let's delete that. Because these aren't necessary. Um, and then I could just use my mirror tool. To mirror these four lines. So I'm not going to do this. And so we're good. Finish the sketch. Go extrude these two things. And I think it's a quarter of an inch. So a negative 0.25. our track. Perfect. Um, let's clean this track. Let's copy it. I'm going to paste it. And we're going to move it this way 12 inches. See that negative 12? You can see that that fits inside of there. Perfect. Awesome. Now let's put our train on there. So really we just need our wheels and our train. So we want this track to be placed kind of right underneath there. That's kind of how it's going to be when, when we're done. So let's make that happen. This should slide back and forth. Okay, so when we join these two, um, we want to have a slider. Yeah, I think a slider is what we should do. And our positioning, we want to select this first object. So we can do these are over here. I guess right here. Um, and then we're going to move that to this point right there. And we will want to slide that way. We also want the Y offset and this offset. And we're going to adjust that. So Looks like 0.025 is my offset for that direction. Um, I'm going to say OK. There we go. Z axis is not the direction that I think I want. Let's see if that's the way I want it to slide. 
no, see that's the wrong way. So there we go. This is the slide direction. So we say okay. So there we have it. Um, that allows us or should allow us to slide this back and forth. Perfect. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to uh, joint these two together. And this is going to be a rigid joint. So I'm going to do a rigid. I'm going to snap mate this to this. And say OK. And now this should slide together. Perfect. There's my train. And now technically you've got the body grounded of the train, but now really I should have my track grounded and I should slide this along that track. But I'm okay with this for now. Uh, this gets me where I need to be. I'll do some motion constraints in the next video. This is, uh, this is looking pretty good. You see my train is on there. There's a slight clearance um, with everything and my wheels fit down in the uh, the grooves and they, um, they've got side to side clearance and again you can see that they're kind of tangent right to there maybe a little bit not um, so I could have I could adjust that so that um, that it's actually that those just touch the top it looks like they're they're a little bit down under there so we'll have to maybe look at those dimensions and see what those values are but that should get you close um, on the train. The next video we'll talk about the layout of your next car and getting your next car in this and then also getting this to move. So when these rotate, um, you know, how far forward does it move? How far back should it move? Um, and then can we get these to be like one up and then while the other one's down and then this rotates, you know, on the way up, this rotates you know, to the down position, see if we can get those kind of synchronized um, together. And then put a motion constraint in there so they, they go together. So I think this is what I was talking about, that those hit. So that might hit right there, actually. Yeah, that looks like it hits. Yep. See that? So, so really, those, those holes for the wheel aren't even high enough yet. Um, or we need to pull these linkage arms up a little bit on our wheels. So we'll talk about modifications in our next video, what dimensions we might need to change so that it actually works in the real world. Uh, hopefully that helps. And again, if you could make a train on a track like this, that's fantastic. Um, keep up the good work.